Well, the revolution for freedom in Iran and against the Islamic Republic regime has involved a lot of brave souls who've put their lives on the line to try to fight for change inside Iran. We know about the young women and men who have sacrificed themselves for human rights, democracy, and to expose the murderous legacy of the Ayatollahs. But there are people who are bravely putting their lives on the line outside of Iran as well. Vahid Beheshti is an Iranian-British journalist and human rights activist, and he has been on a hunger strike that is increasingly getting the attention of the world. His hunger strike outside the UK Foreign Office in London has now stretched to 43 days. Mr. Beheshti, who was arrested in Iran two times before he fled the country 24 years ago, is on a hunger strike that has one simple and profound demand. Put the IRGC on the terrorist list. Right now, Mr. Vahid Beheshti joins me from London. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for having me. And I'm glad I'm uh, talking to your audience. Thank you. On the day 43 of the hunger strike. Thank you so much for doing this, Vahid John. It, it, it has been 43 days, I guess around six weeks. I, I mean, it begs the question that uh, you're a journalist yourself. The first question has to be, how are you feeling right now? So as the days go by, I'm getting weaker and weaker four days. On the day 40, I waited myself. I lost, I lost uh, uh, over 13 kilogram and which my doctor says is more than 17 percent of your weight which is alarming for him but thank god uh, my blood pressure my heartbeat and the other two times they test my blood they said the other stuff uh, surprisingly no more normal to my doctor he's really worried about my weight uh, and that's normal, of course. A fe- 13 kilogram in 43 days hunger struck, I think, is normal, but it's uh, alarming for my duck. Getting weaker and weaker physically, but more determined and stronger internally to continue this. That's interesting. I mean, a few days ago, you said something similar. You were quoted by the BBC as saying, physically, my body is getting weaker and weaker, but my mind is getting stronger. Tell us how your mind is getting stronger and what that means. Uh, By a lot of support that I received from uh, people, from Iranians, non-Iranians, who now they understand why I put myself in this, under this critical situation, living in the street for 43 days and being on hunger struck. So they pay, they pay attention on that. And this is one side of it. From the other side, uh, I have a goal in front of me from the day one. And I meditate on that goal. That goal is prescribing IRGC, which I think, at this uh, phase of, in this phase of our fight with uh, Iranian regime and with these terrorists, it's the most necessary step is prescribing IRGC. And we are in the UK, very close to it. They, I think, I put it this way, our politicians and leaders, they need more motivation and awareness, which... I am trying with all my being to give that to them. And that's all I can say. And so far, I think we had, I wouldn't call it great achievement. We had some achievements, which I can can see it very, very positive. Take take me back to to day one, Vahid. What was... The precipitant. When, when, and how did you first decide you were going to take this action? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, it's me and my wife uh, and my friends who uh, they are working with me in all these years, uh, specifically in this six past six months. We've been in. We had many meetings with uh, politicians in here. MPs, ministers, and many people. 
and we had two conferences in uh, House of Parliament focusing only on prescribing IRGC. So, and this process was moving smoothly. Suddenly we experienced an obstacle, which there were no explanation for it. Even the MPs who they are, are in direct contact with us, they had no explanation. After our research, we done our homework, through our contacts, we found out the obstacle is from the foreign office. So we were in the position that we, we have the majority of, for example, MPs, both side of the house of the parliament, ministers, majority of politicians, I can put it in one way. They are agreeing with this to prescribe IRGC. But foreign, uh, foreign office holding the government back. That was the moment when I, I can say it was about maybe 52 days ago because it was about one week, eight, nine days before I started. I thought, I, I thought this is not working. The conversation, the meeting, the conferences, they're not working because we are talking to converted p people. They are in the same field as us. They have the same demand as us, our politicians, but something else holding them back. So I was really, my mind it was really busy trying to find a way. So because my wife, she's a politician herself. She's a political deputy for conservative party in West Midland. So she's working with 45 MPs. Then when I come to this I would say solution and uh, because you have to do your calculation, you have to um, think about many things. You have to sacrifice many, I would say, things to decide it and become certain to start something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I, I was certain I shared this with my wife. I shocked her first. <laughs> okay, are you sure about this? Anyway, when I was sure uh, 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 and uh, what if what's what, your question? What what was the spark? Mm -hmm. So this was all these I had it on one side, and my wife she was on the phone with one of the journalists from Iran International TV station. When she's got attacked, in when she was on the phone with my wife, and she came and she shared this with me. She said as I was on the phone with uh, this person, she just got attacked in the middle of London. That's, that was the moment uh, I thought we cannot tolerate this anymore. Yeah. In London, they come here after us in London. So yeah. we have to do something to give more motivation to our politicians. I think that was the moment. That was the a spark of this in me. And I can then only... I decided... I, I can only imagine the first few days too. people were, I mean, with respect, people were probably rolling their eyes and going, okay, hunger strike or whatever, you know, uh, when, when do you feel like people started taking you seriously? I mean, you've obviously uh, attracted some real attention. Now you've been in some major newspapers. We are talking to you. Everybody's wanting to, wanting to talk to you. When did you feel that shift? For first one, let me put it this way for first 20 days, they pretend I don't exist, basically, for first 20 days. After 20 days, and then they found out, no, this person maybe is different. He's getting people that were coming and visiting me from the day two when they found out I am here. And then they saw, no, many people, they come, they see me, they bring me flowers, and they chanted. Uh, here they put some kind of demonstration here it was a small but it was something to draw their attention but after the day of the I would say day 22 I think I start getting some visit by uh, MPs first I started and surprisingly on the day 24 somebody I don't name or I, I don't mention 
uh, her name, somebody, some of the politicians who said the day three when one of my friends and went and saw her to ask her to come and see me and listen to my demands. She said, no, don't involve me at all. She came and visit me. Oh. And on the day 26, that was the uh, big day. A uh, few hours before uh, the no rules. Uh, for the first time in the House of Parliament, government, UK government recognized officially my uh, hunger struck. So Alicia Cairns, the head of uh, foreign committee, asked uh, Tom Tugendhat, the Ministry of State for Security, is anybody from the government willing to go and see Vahid Beheshti, who is on hunger struck for 26 days? The representative of the government, Tom Tugendhat, responded back, yes, I am happy to go and see him, plus anybody from the government who's feeling the threat of IRGC. So that was the first time. Then Elisha Kens, the head of foreign committee, one hour after that, she came down herself. She stayed here. It was raining. I remember one and a half hour with us. And she offered me the facility of her office to go and use that. And I got her support from, the, from that day from Elisha. Two days later, the head of the leader of the house, Miss Penny Morden. Yes. raised this again, few more times raised my case in the House of Parliament. On the day 33, I had my first official meeting with the government, with the Ministry of State for Security, Tom Tugendhat. We had 20 minutes, around 20 minutes meeting. And after 15 minutes, I said, there is no me, there is no point me and you talking to each other here, Mr. Tom Tugendhat, because I'm talking to the converted person. Take my message to the Prime Minister. And many, I can say, majority of papers in UK, they covered my story, four televisions, they covered my story. And I said from the day one, I said, I won't go anywhere. I remain here. I am here to tell our leaders, our politicians, there are still people in the world who they are willing to pay the price, yes. whatever it is, to defend and preserve our values, our def the freedom and democracy, our rights. And I'm still here. And so far, I wrote three uh, open letters to the prime minister. Yes. He's yes. still pretending I don't exist. Va Va and I said to him, yes. So I'll ask you about that letter to the prime minister in a moment. But can you can we just take a couple of steps back? And this may feel repetitious to some people in our audience, but I think it's a, it's an important point because I can't think of someone who's better placed to, to explain, if you can, very briefly, why this is such an important issue, the issue of putting the IRGC on the, on the terrorist list. Because it occurs to me that one of the reasons we identify with you, one of the reasons I identify with you right now, it's not just because you're another member of the Iranian diaspora or just, just because you're somebody who, like many of us, is um, wants to see the, the, a change in Iran. It's because this issue of the IRGC being on the terrorist list is First of all, there's not a lot that we can do from where we are inside Iran, but outside of Iran, this is something that dominates our mind, not just in the UK, but this has been an issue in the EU, in Europe, across Europe. This has been an issue here in Canada, where we are still demanding the Canadian government that says it gives all this lip service to supporting the freedom movement, etc., uh, still on, 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 the, on the terrorist list here in, in Canada. So why do you believe, you can explain this to us. Uh, that this is the single most effective and impactful move that the UK or the EU or Canada can make to weaken and eliminate the Islamic Republic's regime's threat in Western society? IRGC, the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, means Islamic Republic of Iran, and Islamic Republic of Iran means IRGC. So IRGC is everything for this regime. This regime would not exist even a minute without IRGC. That's the main reason of the creation of IRGC from the day one, 44 years ago. So what, why this is very important in UK? 
because if we break this lock in UK, we will see the other 27 countries in EU, of course, we had a Brexit, we are separated from EU, but they still have their look on UK. So they are looking what UK do. Australia, Canada, and other countries, New Zealand, they are looking at UK. So where I'm sitting at the moment, I can say is the heart of this uh, right. situation. Right. So, right. And we are very close to it. We are not facing with many countries. Here, we are only one country. We have the majority. We've done the majority of work. Majority of work has been done here. We've been working on it for six months at least just now. So we have the majority of politicians who they are agreeing absolutely with us. I'm getting a lot of messages from politicians these days, which they have a big support for me. Alicia Kenz, uh, the head of foreign uh, committee, just yesterday he tweeted one of the news about me from one from London News, I think it was, and she put the quote on that. Vahid Beheshti's strength tell us uh, Vahid Beheshti with um, immense strength raise his voice to make us. Uh, aware that we need to prescribe IRGC. So this is the message of the head of a foreign committee of this country. So we are very close to it. And I I know uh, by me, I think, this is my belief and this is what I see as in these 43 days. I think by me putting myself in this situation, some people, they ask me, is it worth it? I say, yes, definitely. Because this is not just about the people of Iran. IRGC is about us, about me, you, me here in UK, you there in Canada. Look, they are capable to shut down one TV station here and do many things as you ever more than me in Canada and other countries. So put it, placing IRGC on the terrorist list of, of UK, and they are in the terrorist list of America, they will soon after the UK will be listed on EU, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And that means Islamic Republic of Iran, it's going to his, their last few days of their life. Thank you for that. That was very... Um... That, that was both eloquent and um, simple, accessible, so that, that that we can really understand what what both your mission is and and what the our collective mission is with respect to this uh, this idea of putting the IRGC on the terrorist list. Can I just ask you because I mean, there's so much speculation about it. People come on this show and offer up a, a number of different reasons. I'm curious why what you really think is going on. This is not. This is not rocket science to put the IRGC on the terrorist list. What has been the blockage from the EU, the head of the EU saying we need more evidence to the Swedish uh, foreign minister saying um, this is this would be irrational to the Canadian government making giving us reasons why it wouldn't be fair to do this. I mean, what do you really think is going on? that has prevented these governments from taking this extra st step that, as you say, would be such a profound move in terms of isolating and taking on this regime in Iran, which they claim to, you know, have issues with when it comes to human rights and democracy, etc. The, the, our first problem is this, that human rights are not the first priority of all these leaders that we are facing. So we have, there's a chess game. So we have to play this chess game very cleverly. So, but the reason that, uh, don't, let's not forget, Iranian regime, IRGC, has spent a lot of, um, I would say, dollars, billions of dollars, they said about 800 billion, something like that, on outside of Iran, on their lobbies, on to buy so many people and do so many uh, activities in past 44 years. So in these past 
six months. So they have their lobbies, they have their people everywhere in all these big media. So they who they give wrong information to Western leaders, to the leader of, for example, Canada, New Zealand, America. Yeah. But just for past six months, these leaders start getting the right and true uh, right information, the facts from some diaspora who they are really uh, truthful. So this is a big day. Our work on this for 44 years. And now we're trying to change the direction from where they were taking these Western leaders. So still there are lots of work. What I heard from uh, the politicians here, and this is not something secret because they said it themselves and I say it as well. They said in England, what is the obstacle in England? They said the Democrats, Biden administration, hold uh, UK government back because they said their excuse was this. We are in middle of a hostage exchange with Iran, so don't prescribe now. We do it later. I said, this is absolutely what IRGC wants because that's why they take hostages. Right. Appeasement policy didn't work for past 44 years, will never work. So the only language they understand is pressure and a strong leadership. That's all. If they see a strong leadership and pressure, they change their ways. And that's the only language which they respond to. This is what I said to the politicians here. And I said to the uh, secretary, Minister of Secretary of, uh, Sec for Security, to Mr. Tom Tugendhat. I said, I have solid answers and evidence for any excuse that you and your government has uh, that tell us we shouldn't prescribe IRGC now. So I am here with uh, solid answers and evidence. Um, Vahid, I, I, I have a few more questions in my mind that I want to ask you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little self-conscious. I don't want to, I feel bad. You're you know, I, I want you to, I don't want to tax your health by, uh, by keeping you too long, but if it's okay with you, you just tell me if you ever want to stop, uh, because yeah, I, okay. I could only imagine that you're exhausted. Um, but I, I don't yeah, want to, no, please, please, please don't uh, be, uh, I, I'm okay now. You, 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 your experience with this regime and your feelings about the Islamic Republic regime are, are not hypothetical. You were, you were arrested a couple of times in Iran. Can you tell us what your personal experience has been? I mean, in a, I know, I know this would probably take a long time, but I mean, in a nutshell, what has your experience been with this regime? We are in war from, you know, from the moment that I found myself in front of them when I was in Iran and after I uh, fled. Uh, so we are in war, I always said. In uh, specifically in past six months, because I was giving a talk uh, every day, sometimes twice a day, I always had one sentence behind me, which is says, we are in war. Very, uh, I would say, uh, we are in war with the enemy and we have to um, be aware of this. So it's war. They, they're not going to give up the power. They're not going to give up the uh, this country, they occupied one country with all this uh, wealth, with power. They're not going give to give it up easily. So we are in war and we're expecting anything. Yes, I was arrested twice. I was lucky I could you know, come out of the country, but always under the threat. Always. They, because all my family, they live in Iran. Great pressure, always on the family. Always messages they get you will soon see the dead body of your son and your daughter-in-law in the street of London. It's not today or yesterday. We've been dealing with this for past, I would say, 16, 17 years since I get involved uh, seriously uh, one year after the Green Movement again. Uh, so it was like that, but I accepted. We are in war and the war is not going to be easy. 
as you see 43 days ago i decided i said i uh, to myself i have to change my uh, battlefield uh, battlefield uh, and i moved from the very warm and comfortable office behind the computer to the street mm. and i've been living in the street for 43 days on hunger struck and will continue but this is the part of the war that we are in were you arrested in your own for being a journalist for somehow no uh, no, no no i wasn't i wasn't a journalist in that time i was just raising my voice giving awareness to my schoolmates to the people who they were listening to me and it was about a debating a, a lot of debate with your uh, religious teacher <laughs> debating with me. so it was about this stuff right you're not the only person who was arrested for those things uh, you you you've had the support as you say of many people visiting you in london you talked about some of the politicians who've been visiting you at that spot that you're you're camped out at can can you tell us there's i mean there's also been all kinds of well-known people iranian and otherwise i've seen in social media who've been visiting you uh, can can you tell us what that has meant to you and if there were uh, share share with us if there's any visitors that have surprised you or um particularly meant a lot to you because you didn't expect to see them there uh, i can say i wouldn't expect this much love and um uh, attention to be honest and i didn't ever even think about this i knew i have to do something to draw the attention of our politicians here in UK. But from the day one, as you described, people just, I, would, I can put it this way, they didn't leave me even for one second alone. I always felt uh, so much love and passion from these people. And I get my energy, I said, I say it in, day, in my daily talks. And I get lots of energy, motivation, and love from these people. Who they are, who they all have the same demand as me. And yes, on the day, uh, on the fifth day, I got the visit by Mr. Pahlavi and Miss Shirin Ebadi. Ms. Shirin Ebadi, I know her from before because I used to work because of my human rights activities and the other stuff. I know her. I've been working with her. But Mr. Pahlavi was surprising. And few of these, um, they all are amazing. I don't know what can I say because there is no difference between any of these people who they come and visit me. Uh, uh, they all are amazing. This morning on the day 43 it was hard for me because the night I didn't have a good sleep. Then it was about eight o'clock. Somebody shouted from outside, Mr. Beheshti, Mr. Beheshti. I thought because I knew from Forbes they're going to come and interview me today. I thought they are from Forbes. So I was going to say, I'm going to, I, I thought. Okay, if the fourth, I'm going to say I'm coming out. I come. I will come out of my tent in half an hour. But I said, "Who is this?" Then he starts speaking Farsi, and he says, "I am this person. My name is Ali." I said, "Who you work for?" And then he says, "No, I just wanted to take a quick shot from you for my Instagram." <laughs> and that moment, I said, "I'm going to go out now." Because that person, it was very, it was much, much more important for me because I know the revolution, the change yeah. will happen with the hands of these individuals and with their phones. So I went out and I had a quick uh, interview with this person, amazing person. He was a software engineer. So that was, it's all surprise. And my auntie, I didn't expect my auntie and uh, she yesterday I was talking to a few people here. Uh, suddenly I saw my auntie next to me. She came from Sweden without telling me. Wow. That was her second second time. Well, so I I understand you. Lots you've, of surprises. 
I understand you've you've been hearing from people inside Iran as well, including political oh, yeah. prisoners. Oh. What 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 do they say to you? Oh, that's 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 even the most I would say um, amazing and interesting part of it. In each different city of Iran, they put the um, banner, they write my name on the uh, walls, and prisoners from inside of Iran. This morning, I've got the phone call. I don't call the name. Is gonna make. Um, I don't want to make trouble for them. Mm-hmm. I've got a phone call from somebody in uh, WhatsApp, and these people they were in prison before, and I was campaigning for them here, and now they 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 called me and they said the other people inside of prison they just had a phone call from them, and they said we are worried about Wahi, and I and I promised to them I said no don't worry. I look after myself, and I promise to all of you, I be, I will be alive. I'm, I love life. Let me share this with you. Some people in the beginning, who, the people who didn't know me, they thought, okay, this is a suicide. I said, don't say that. I love, love life. The people who know me, they know how much energy I have each morning when I wake up. I have many plans for my life. And I am full of excitement, full of uh, dreams. And that's why actually I am here. That's why, because I believe we have to make a difference. Otherwise, why we are here? So I am here and I love every second of the life and I'm enjoying. Yes, I am in the very critical situation, but I enjoy the result that I am witnessing here, second by second. Vahid, are you, are have you heard or are you aware of um, any evidence that the the regime, that the that the 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 mullahs, that the people in power in the Islamic Republic and or their agents are are have you on their radar in terms of the public? Oh yes, that this. Uh, I mean, how, what about security? I just, uh, I don't want to scare you or give anybody any ideas, but I mean, surely you've thought about this because you're now, you're, you know, making international news now. Uh, at the moment, I can say I'm in the most safest place in London. Hmm. So in front of uh, UK foreign affairs. Office. So that's for now. But after that, of course, I've been um, under this situation, not, right now in past 15 16 years but i said uh, we got lots of threat we get uh, lots of this but this is a war that we are choose is is my choice to be in it so it's the battlefield in my something happen and it might not happen i try my best to look after myself look after the family my friends and we all are together in this battle but um, I cannot say anything uh, because whatever you say from this regime, they done it. Uh, I am one of those people. I can. My blood is not, I would say, more valuable than the blood of Massa or Nika. We are in one battle and we are fighting, and hopefully soon we will win. We we have. There is only one way for us to win this battle and take the country back. You said your wife has been so supportive. I know that she's spent a lot of time down there with you. um, Are you hearing from your family back in Iran? And uh, what what do they have to say? They are very worried, but they've been dealing with me since I was 14 years old. (laughs) (laughs) They know know their son is not a quiet person. And yeah, from in the beginning, the first two weeks, they were really... Uh, worried, uh, uh, uncomfortable, but now the people around them try to uh, they calm them down and I said to them, this is the way that I choose and I promise to all of them I will be alive and uh, we uh, hopefully we win this battle here. At them. Yes, they are worried, of course, all of them they are worried, but this is the way that we choose them to be in. There's a there's a concert being planned to support you. Our, our friend uh, Sepp Osley and others are doing this on April 11th in a few days. 
what 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 do you make of that you've become someone that people are 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 organizing concerts around it's i said we all are together i don't see this as in as an as an individual act and i try to not be proud of anything because i st- i always reminded myself every i try to remind myself to not be proud because this is a group work this is a group work of all of us i am just playing my part very small imposing a little bit of cold now nah, the weather is not bad and uh, hunger on myself but majority of the work is with people we all are together on this in this battle and the credit is for the people of iran for no one is here i am and uh, most surprisingly of course the regime is not going to stay quiet they try to uh, um, label me with first with a uh, with different groups and then with Mossad in Israel and then with MI6 here and then with a different group of opposition like Mujahideen and, and others. And yesterday I said you cannot put a label with, on me with any kind of glue. Hmm. So I am, uh, I have been independent. I am belong to the people of Iran and I will stay independent uh, till we win this battle and, and take our country back. And then after that, you won't be, you won't see me in the <laughs> politics. Uh, I have a lot of things to but, go and be busy with that. You you will have earned a a, um, a great rest. Uh, I, I I as a final question to you, we started. Um, I started by asking about your health, and you talked about your doctor um, weighing you and and checking you out and and the profound amount of, lo- of of weight you've lost and 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 the effect that these 43 days have had on you obviously on a hunger strike um has your doctor encouraged you to stop uh, yes I, I, yes and and what do you tell your doctor when they tell you to stop it two weeks ago he said i think you've done your job and uh, because yeah, my doctor is my friend also my gp is as a good friend of mine. And then I said, this is the way that I chosen to uh, fight, fight with this regime. And specifically at this period, IRGC. And he says, all right, your job is to fight with them. My job is to keep you alive. So we promise he's going to keep me alive and I'm going to keep fighting. That's the deal between me and my doctor. Vahid Beheshti, I thank you so much for making the time. I thank you for your determination. And thank I, I thank you for your, your wisdom. I appreciate you doing this today. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Khodafis. Merci. Khodafis.